Hey nines, as promised, here are the test corrections. So let's take a look at the first expression. It says simplify each expression. As you know, that means that when you're done, you should um, just I have one um, or more variable terms that are going to be um, added or subtracted. So if we take a look here, we have two bracket, bracket expressions, one subtract the other. So first I want to get rid of the bracket. So I'm going to remove the brackets from the first expression because it's literally like I'm multiplying it by one and one times anything it stays the same and then remember when you subtract another bracketed expression then what the subtraction tells you is that you're going to change the signs um, of all of the terms inside of the bracket so the negative 4x squared is going to become positive 4x squared the positive 2xy is going to become negative 2xy and the positive 3y squared is going to become negative 3y squared. And so now we can just add our like terms. So I have 5x squared and then I have plus 4x squared. So that's going to be 9x squared. And then I have negative 3xy subtract 2xy. So that's going to be negative 5xy. And then I have 9y squared minus 3y squared. So that's going to be positive 6y squared. So I'm left with 9x squared subtract 5xy plus 6y squared. So let's take a look at B. In B I have a polynomial and I'm dividing it by a monomial. And so the rule says that whenever I have a polynomial divided by a monomial, I just simply have to divide each of the terms in the polynomial um, by the divisor. So I have 12x cubed divided by negative 2x. 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. x cubed divided by x is x squared. Negative 8x squared divided by negative 2x. Well, negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4. And x squared divided by x is x. And then I have positive 6x divided by negative 2x. Well, positive 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. And x divided by x is just 1. And 3 times 1 would stay 3. So I don't need to write the 1. Um, and so then I'm done. All right. So C here, I have a monomial divided by a monomial. So I just do the math on the like terms. So I do 9 divided by 12. Well, I'm just going to reduce that to 3 over 4. Okay. Then I do p fifth divided by p squared. Well, I subtract the exponent, so that's going to be p cubed. And then I have q to the 15 divided by q3. So again, I subtract the exponents, so I have q12. In D, D is the opposite of B. Here I have a polynomial expression multiplied by a monomial. So again, I multiply all of the terms inside this um, bracketed expression by the monomial on the outside. So I do negative 2 times 3x squared. Well, negative 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Remember, like bases, add the exponents. And then I have negative 2x squared times negative 2x. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And x squared times x, I add the exponent, so it's x cubed. Because remember, even though it's not written, there is a 1. Um, the exponent would be 1 here. And then I have negative 2x squared times positive 4. Well, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And there's nothing else to multiply the x squared by. So it stays x squared. Okay, so that's it for simplifying expressions. The next thing we want to do is we want to solve equations. So if you remember when we solve equations, we always are going to do the opposite. So I'm actually going to, um, so here I would add 5 to both sides. So I'm going to do negative 3x minus 5 plus 5 equals 94 plus 5. So I end up with negative 3x equals 99. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3, and so x equals negative 33. So I want to do the same thing over here. I want to do opposite operations, but the problem is, is that I have um, a binomial here and a binomial here. I need to get my x's on one side and my numbers on the other. So I'm going to um, subtract 2x from both sides first. So I'm going to subtract 2x and subtract 2x. So when I do that, I have left with negative 5 equals, so 5 minus 2 is 3x plus 10. 
So now, over here, I have this 10 that I don't want because I need only x's on one side. So I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. So I'm going to subtract 10, and I'm going to subtract 10. So negative 5 minus 10 is negative 15. And then that's just going to equal 3x because we're doing these opposite operations to get rid of things, remember. So lastly, I have 3x equals negative 15. Well, I want to get 1x, so I have to do the opposite operation, which is um, division. So I'm going to divide by 3. I'm going to divide by 3. And so negative 5 is equal to x. So the last question on this page, it's in bold, perform a check. And a check is when you substitute this number into both sides of the equation without moving anything around, making to see if they both give the same answer. So let's do the left side of the equation first. I'm going to put in 2 into here. And because of this equal sign, I know whatever answer I get on this side, I should get the same answer on this side. So I'm going to do 2 times 2 plus 3 minus 2 times 2 minus 4. So now I get 2 and then 2 plus 3 is 5, minus 2, and 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And then 2 times 5 is 10, and negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And so 10 um, plus 4 equals 14. So now I want to check and see, do I get that same answer on this side? So I, I'm going to write the 2 in here, and so I get 3 times 2 plus 8. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 8. 6 plus 8 is 14. I'm going to write it again just so I can show that 14 does equal 14. So when, so the answer has to be that x is 2 to make these two things equal, right? And when x is 2, they both equal 14. So now my left side equals my right side. So therefore, because the question says to determine if x equals 2 is a solution, so you have to mention whether it is or isn't. So therefore, x equals 2 is a solution. All right, so that's your first page done. So let's take a look at the second page. So on the second page, it says the perimeter of the shape below is 64 meters. Write an equation to find the dimensions of the shape. Well, the dimensions are the side length. So we need to know what x is so we can figure out what this side length is, this side length is, and this side length is. We know that a perimeter is just the um, sum of all of the sides. So I know that my perimeter is going to equal x plus, now because I'm writing an expression, remember you have to put it in brackets, and then so I have all three of my sides there added together. Um, and in this case, I know that the perimeter of the shape is 64 meters. So I know that 64 is going to equal x plus um, x plus 1 plus x plus 3. Um, I should probably continue to try to simplify this, but because B says to determine the dimensions of the shape, um, I'm going to keep working this down here so that I can actually figure out what x is. So I'm going to do 64 equals x. Now I can drop the brackets because it's like there's an imaginary 1 here, so 1 times anything is just itself. And I can drop these brackets because it's like there's a 1 here. It's not like there is. There is a 1 here, we just don't have to write it. Um, so it becomes x plus 3. So now I know that 64 equals, now I can do math on this side, so I'm going to do it. So I have 1x, 2x, 3x, plus 4. And so now I want to solve this equation. So I'm going to get rid of the 4 from this side, so I have to get rid of it from that side. So I end up that with 60 equals 3x. And now I want to get rid of the 3, so I'm going to do the opposite operation. I'm going to divide, so I end up with 20 is equal to x. Well, that's what x is, right? That's not the dimensions. We said already that the dimensions were the side lengths. So in this case, I know that x equals 20. I know that um, x plus 1 is going to equal 20 plus 1, which is 21. And I know that x plus 3 is going to equal 20 plus 3, which is 23. So I write my statement, therefore the dimensions are 
20. Now here I need to write my units if I haven't written them already. So I know it's being um, written in, it's being measured in meters. So it's going to be 20 meters by 21 meters by 23 meters. And then you're done. So moving on. So here you had to simplify, and this one's a little bit tricky, but it's going to use all of the same rules. So see how there's no addition and subtraction here? It's just a multiplication, and a, like these two ter these two monomials are being multiplied and then divided. So we have to follow our um, we have to follow our exponent laws, and at the same time, we always whenever we're simplifying anything, we want to follow bed mass. So the last thing. Um, we want to do here is this division because whenever you have something like this it's like you have the numerator divided by the denominator and the numerator would all be in its own brackets so the first thing always 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 is you simplify the numerator you simplify the denominator and then you do the division so let's simplify the numerator so we have this cubed here so we know that cubed goes with everything so we have negative 2 cubed we have x cubed cubed, so when you have a power to a power, you multiply, so it's going to be x to the 9. And then we have y squared cubed, so again we multiply the powers and we get y to the 6. And then we still have this negative, it's like there's a negative 1, so I'm actually just going to write the negative 1 here. And then I have x, y to the 4. Now I'm going to simplify the denominator. So again, I have a negative. That's like there's a negative 1 there, so negative 1 squared. So I'm just going to write that actually, negative 1 squared. Then I have x squared squared. Well, x squared squared, I multiply those together, I get x to the fourth. Then I have y squared squared, so I multiply those and I get y to the fourth. And then I have z to the exponent 1 squared, I multiply that together and I get z squared. So I'm not going to do any division yet until I have simplified the numerator. So I have negative 2 cubed is 8, um, and 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. Actually, I just lied to you. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. I'm actually going to leave that like that for now. Um, then we have x to the exponent 9 times x. So x to the exponent 9 times x is x to the 10. Then we have y to the 6 times y to the 4th, so that is y to the 10. And then I still have this negative 1 that I haven't multiplied by yet, so I'm just going to put that down. And then on the numerator, denominator, I have negative 1 squared, which is 1. So I'm just going to write that. And then I have x to the 4th, y to the 4th, z squared. So I'm going to keep simplifying my numerator until I can't simplify it anymore. So I have negative 8 times negative 1, which is 8. And then I have x to the 10, and I have y to the 10. And that's all going to be over 1x to the 4th, y to the 4th, z to the square, squared. And because there's a 1 here, I'm not actually, well, actually, I will leave it there. Never mind, x to the 4th, y to the 4th, z squared. So now I can actually finally do that division. So I'm going to do 8 divided by 1 is 8. x to the 10 divided by x to the 4th is x to the 6th, y to the 10 divided by y to the 4th is y to the 6th. And now I have this z squared in the denominator, but I don't have anything to divide it with. So I'm not doing anything with it. So it just stays where it is because I've done no math on it. And then you're done. All right, number three, solve the equation. So again, this is a little bit more tricky of a solving question. So first we want to um, expand and simplify before we start start solving. So to expand and simplify, we do 2 times 2x is 4x, and 2 times positive 3 is positive 6. And then I have this negative here, so that means that all these signs are going to change. So I get negative x because it was positive, so now it's going to become negative, and this was negative, so now it's going to become positive. And then I'm going to multiply x by negative 2 on this side, so I get negative 2x. And I'm going to multiply it negative 2 by 5, and I get negative 10. So before I start rearranging or, or subtracting or dividing, I want to do any math that I can. I want to simplify. So I'm going to simplify this. So I have 4x minus x is 3x, and 6 plus 4 is 10. And that's going to equal negative 2x minus 10. And so now this question becomes a lot easier. It's just like one we did on the first page. So um, 
I'm going to get rid of this negative 2x on this side by adding 2x, and that means I have to add 2x on this side. So I end up with 5x plus 10 is equal to negative 10. And now to get rid of the 10 on this side, I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to subtract 10 and subtract 10. So then I end up with 5x equals and negative 10 subtract 10 more is negative 20. And so now to get rid of the 5 here, I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides. And so I end up with x equals negative 4. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> so here we have the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle, and it's P equals 2 times L plus W, and we need to solve for L, okay? And so all that's telling us is that when we're done, instead of having P equals, we want to have L equals. And we can do this in a couple of different ways, but remember, whenever we're rearranging, we always do everything um, in the opposite we do opposite operations in opposite order. So instead of doing um, bed mass, right, we're gonna do we're gonna do it in the opposite order. So we do subtraction, addition, then multiplication, division, and then exponents and brackets. So here we have a bracket. So we can't touch that till the end. Nothing can happen with that bracket until we have done all the other operations we can do. So um, I'm just gonna rewrite it so that you can actually see what's going on. So I have two times. L plus W. Well, because this is a bracket, I don't touch it. I look at this too. Well, this is two times this. So that means that I can divide both sides by two. So I'm going to divide this side by two, and I'm going to divide this side by two. Well, now I have P over two. And here, I know that two divided by two is just one. So then I'm left with L plus W. So now I can subtract W from both sides. So I'd subtract W from this side and I'd subtract W from this side. So I'd have P over two subtract W is equal to L and I would be done. Um, so number five, you wanna determine a simplified expression for the missing, missing sides of the shape below. So there's, we've got We've got 40x plus 15, 34x minus 2, and then we have something missing. And then here we have something missing. And then we have 13x minus 2, 11x, and 14x plus 12, and 8x. Well, I know that 8x plus 11x plus b, that is the same as 34x minus 2. So I'm going to say that 8x plus 11x plus b is equal to 34x minus 2. And I'm just going to quickly, right, if we take a look at this, we have this side and this side and this side. And of course, that's all going to be the same as this long side over here. So, um, so I've got 8x plus 11x, which is 19x plus b is equal to 34x minus 2. And I need to figure out what B is, so B is going to stay on this side, which means I'm going to subtract 19x from both sides. Um, so I'm going to be left with 34 minus 19 is 15x minus 2. So I know my one side length is 15x minus 2. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side, so I know that this side length plus this side length plus this side length is equal to that side length. So I know that A plus, and I'm going to put it in brackets because it's an expression, 13x minus 2 plus, and I'm going to put it in brackets because it's an expression, 14x plus 12 is equal to 40x plus 15. So I want to simplify it. So um, <laughs> I can get rid of my brackets by multiplying them both by 1, and same with this one. So 14x plus 12, and that's going to equal 40x plus 15. So now I want to add my like terms. So 13x plus 14x is 27x, and negative 2 plus 12 is 10. 
and that's going to equal 40x plus 15. And now I want to take the 27x, get rid of it on this side because I just want to be left with a, and I'm going to get rid of the 27x. So I have a plus 10 is equal to 13x plus 15. And now I want to subtract the 10 because all I want left is my a. So I end up with a equals 13x plus 5. And then I am done. All right, now the next one, solving equations when you have fractions. So we said that we want to get rid of the fractions by multiplying by um, this, this expression and this expression and this expression all by the same thing. Um, so in this case, 3 and 6 both go into 6. So I'm going to multiply everything by 6. So I'm going to do um, 6 times 3y plus 5 minus 6 times y minus 3 equals negative 2 times 6. So every single thing gets multiplied by 6. So I'm going to rewrite that just so that we can see it. 6 times 3y plus 5 over 3 minus 6 times y minus 3 over 6 equals 6 times negative 2. Well, the nice thing about this is that because this is being multiplied by this, it doesn't matter whether I do the division first or not. So I'm going to divide 6 by 3, and I get 2. And I'm going to divide 6 by 6, and I get 1. So now I have 2 times 3y plus 5 minus um, 1 times y minus 3 equals negative 12. So now I need to expand and simplify this side. So 2 times 3y is 6y, and 2 times 5 is positive 10. Now I have a subtract here, which means that these signs are going to change. So it's going to be minus y plus 3. So that was positive, now it's negative. That was negative, now it's positive. It's going to equal negative 12. Now I simplify this side by adding like terms. So 6y minus, five is, or minus 1 is 5y, and 10 plus 3 is positive 13, and that equals negative 12. So now I need to get rid of the 13 and the 5 by doing opposite operations. So I'm going to subtract 13 and subtract 13. And so I have 5y equals negative 25. And now I want to get rid of this 5 by doing opposite operations. So I'm going to divide by 5. And so I have y equals negative 5. OK, now on to the thinking. So <laughs> if you remember, we keep saying that any time you're trying to isolate something or get it by itself, you have to undo everything that's been done to it. And we always undo everything in, in um, in the opposite to the way we would normally apply it. So we normally apply bed mass, so we're going to do SAMDEV. Okay, so we have 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 3 equals um, 75. Again, we can't touch this because it's a bracket. So the first thing, so this subtraction doesn't matter because it's inside of a bracket, so it's this plus 3 we want to get rid of. So we're going to get rid of it by subtracting 3. So then we have 2 times x minus 1 squared equals 72. So now we still can't touch the bracketed expression, so it's being multiplied by 2. So that means we want to divide both sides by 2. So when we do that, we have x minus 1 squared equals 36. So we still have this bracket which is the last thing we can do. And so that means that exponents come before brackets, so we want to undo the exponents. We know that when we undo the exponents, we're literally going to be taking the square root of both sides. So we end up with x minus 1 equals 6. And then now the bracket is, in essence, gone. Um, so I can, I can now add 1 to both sides and I get x equals 7. Now, for some of those of you that um, are thinking, shouldn't there be another answer? There should be, because if we take a look here, when I did x minus 1 squared equals 36, when you take, um, 
when when you take the square root of a number, 6 times 6 could be 36, but also negative 6 times negative 6 could be 36. So there could have been a whole other possibility where we have x minus 1 equals negative 6, because that squared would make 36 as well. So then we would have to add 1 to both sides, and we'd have x equals negative 5. All right. So this part, determine a simplified expression to represent the shaded area of the region. So we, narr we know that area is equal to length times width, right? Area equals L times W. And in this case, we want to calculate the area of the shaded region. So if we calculate the area of the big rectangle and we subtract the area of the small rectangle, then we should get the area of the shaded region. So the area of the shaded region is going to equal the area of the big rectangle minus the area of the small rectangle. And I put these little subsets on so I know what areas I'm talking about. Well, I know that the area of the big rectangle is just going to be this side times this side. But whenever I write an expression, I always put the monomial first. So it's going to be 3x times 6x plus 4. And then I know the area of the small rectangle it's going to be this side times this side. And I always put the monomial first, so I have 2x times 3x plus 3. So this then is an expression that represents the area of the shaded rectangle. So that's what I'm going to write here. 3x times 6x plus 4 minus 2x times 3x plus 3. And then it says to simplify it, so I'm just going to do the math on it. So 3x times 6x is 18x squared. 3x times positive 4 is positive 12x. Negative 2x times 3x is negative 6x squared. And negative 2x times 3 is negative 6x. So now I'm going to add like terms. So I have 18x squared minus 6x squared, which is 12x squared. And then I have 12x minus 6x, which is positive 6x. And then this would all be written in meters squared. So therefore, um, the or 12x squared plus 6x meters squared represents the area of the shaded region. All right, we're, all, we're getting there, we're almost done. So in this question, you have to write a scenario that can be modeled by the following equation. So what I'm asking for is a word problem in essence, right? So what, um, what could we create? And there's lots of different examples where we end up with three different expressions. So this is one expression, because it's in brackets, that's a second expression and a third expression, okay? so. Um, in this case, we could let x be anything, right? So if I look here, I've got x, and then I have x plus 1 and x plus 2. So this kind of really lends itself nicely to, um, if we say that this is a number, right? And then this is that same number plus 1 and that same number plus 2. So those would be three consecutive numbers. And those three consecutive numbers would add up to 30. So you would say something like determine... three consecutive numbers that add up to 30. Okay, so now we have Fred, Wilma, and Dino, and they're all play Splatoon with each other online. And Dino has eight more wins than Wilma, and Wilma has three times more wins than Fred. So we have to write an expression that represents their total number of wins and define the variables. So um, I'm going to start with Fred, and I'm going to let X represent Fred's wins.
And the reason I started with Fred is because I know that Wilma has three times more than um, more wins than Fred, and I know that Dino has eight more wins than Wilma. So this way, I'm going to be doing multiplications instead of divisions. So here, Wilma has three times, so that's multiplication. So then I'm going to say let 3x represent Wilma's wins. So, so if Fred is x, Wilma is 3x. So now Dino has 8 more wins than Wilma. Well, I know Wilma is 3x, so that means that if Dino has 8 more wins than Wilma, and it's going to be 3x plus 8. So now that I figured out all the expressions that represent their wins, I can come up with um, with an expression to represent their total number of wins. It's going to be all of their wins added together. So it's going to be x plus 3x plus 3x plus 8. And if I want to simplify that, I would have x plus 3x. And here I can drop the bracket because I'm multiplying it by 1. So it would be 7x plus 8. So in part B, it says if they have 106 wins in total, determine how many wins each one has. Well, I know then that this is the total wins, and I know this is an expression for total wins. So I know that 7x plus 8 has to equal 106. So now again, it's just about solving the equation. So I'm going to subtract 8, and I'm going to subtract 8. So 7x is equal to 98, and then I'm going to divide by 7 to get rid of this 7, so I know that x is equal to 14. So x is Fred's wins, so I know that Fred has won 14 times. Well, Wilma wins 3 uh, times x times, so that's going to be 3 times 14, which is going to be 42. And um, Dino wins 3x plus 8 times, so that's going to be 3x plus 8, which is equal to 3 times 14 plus 8, which is going to be 42 plus 8, which is 50. So therefore, Fred wins 14 times, Wilma wins 42 times, and Dino wins 50 times. All right, so we're at communication. So let's look at the communication questions. So um, you were supposed to circle the errors and explain what the students did wrong. So if we take a look here, um, when when we're applying a power to a power, um, the big problem here is this negative 6 because really this is going to be negative 2 cubed. So it would be equal to negative 2 cubed and then x um, to the exponent 1 cubed. So it would be x cubed and then y squared cubed, which would be y to the 6. And so we'd end up with negative 8 x cubed y to the 6. Um, on this side, the big problem is, is we looked at what's the smallest number that 3 and 4 can go into. So that would be 12. So we multiplied 2x minus 1 over 4 by 12, and we multiplied 12 by x minus 1 over 3, but we forgot to multiply 12 by 5. Okay, so you need to multiply... every term by the same multiple. In this case, 12. So we would put the, so times 12. There we go. 
Um, and then somehow there was another mistake here. So as you looked, it was 3 times 2x, so that's good. 6x minus 3 plus 5 equals 4x minus 4. And then we suddenly had this 2x equals negative 1. Um, and there was a mistake here because if we added up negative 3 plus 5, so I'm just going to do this one over here, we would have got 6x plus 2 equals 4x minus 4. And so, because negative 3 plus 5 is 2, and then when we subtracted 2 um, from both sides, we would have got 6x equals 4x minus 6. So, um, and then if we keep going and we subtract the 4x from both sides, we would have had 2x is equal to negative 6. So, Ultimately, there was a mistake made from this step, if you've done all these steps, to this step. And so this negative 1 would also have been incorrect. But the one I actually want you to find here was this. So there was some bad algebra in here. Um, um, and so if you found that, um, I gave you a mark. But this was actually the more, the more important one that I wanted you to notice. And then lastly, number two, so Sam says that 3x is a binomial because there is a number and a variable, and Julie says it's a monomial because there's only one term, and Fareen thinks it's a polynomial, so who is correct? Well, um, polynomials um, are literally the addition and subtraction of one or more terms. one or more terms. Um, a binomial is a polynomial with two terms. Um, polynomial containing two terms and a monomial this is not brief is a polynomial containing one term so if we take a look here we know that a term is a number and a variable so this would be a monomial so since a term has coefficients and variables. Um, Julie and Farine are correct. All right, nines, hope that helps.